Hey, welcome back to Quentin Jones Guitar. I'm Quentin Jones, and today I'm going to do another episode of Quentin's Vinyl Vault. And I've got an awesome collection of records. This time it's not just one album. This is three albums that I came across, and uh, both of these albums I first heard back in 1970 when I was just a little kid and my brother Bruce brought them home. Well, actually, that's not true. The first album I heard in 1970, and the other ones I think came out, I think I heard about 75 or 76. And what are they? Well, at the time that I, I found out about them, they were either imports or bootlegs. Um, and they are The Beatles featuring Tony Sheraton, Hamburg, 1960, which is not accurate. And then The Beatles' first live recordings, Volume 1 and Volume 2. That was Volume 2. The white one's Volume 1. And uh, this is The Beatles' John, Paul, George, and Ringo, first live recordings, Hamburg, Germany, 1962. Now, these albums are probably the least known Beatle recordings there are. However, some of the songs on this album uh, were on the anthology. And uh, this is an amazing record, and here's why. Both of these records were recorded before the Beatles were the Mop Tops. This was recorded, I believe, during their second trip to Hamburg. Um, but it was early on. Pete was still in the band, and they were playing uh, a competing club with Tony Sheridan. Tony Sheridan was an English singer who uh, went to Germany, Hamburg, Germany, to perform. And a lot of artists did. Hamburg at that time was like uh, Las Vegas, but even Wicked. It was just a wicked hard city, and that's where a lot of rock and rollers who were not on the tip of their career would go. A lot of the uh, 50s rock and rollers came through Germany at the same time the Beatles did, so as some of their careers were leveling down, others were coming up, and a lot of these uh, early rockers the Beatles actually came in contact with, including uh, Little Richard and uh, um, Gene Vincent. And anyways, uh, Tony Sheraton was a uh, star in England and he went over to Germany and he loved the Beatles and he used to have them jam with them and he had a record deal with Polydor Records and that's actually what this is on. Now, he hired them to be his backing band and they went into a, a studio and they cut these songs and they also cut two songs without him, just as the Beatles. One is Cry For a Shadow, which was written by John and George, the only uh, Lennon Harrison composition there is. And the other one was a cover, Ain't She Sweet. So, what should I tell you? Well, how about I tell you the story? My brother, when he came home in 1970 with this record, and this is the very record, he put it on my mom's Zenith stereo. We had a, Mom had a big Zenith stereo. And uh, I was expecting maybe uh, Hey Jude or something off of the Beatles' second album or something like that. And the first thing that came across was John Lennon and Ain't She Sweet. And it was so raw, it made my head split. This is in 1970. I was expecting a Beatle record. This was something, this was this was something that was edgy and hard. I mean, it's just raw. And I went berserk and I opened it up. And they had these really cool pictures. Um, I'll put these pictures in, but uh the pictures on the inside of this record were amazing. And I saw these guys with their leather jackets and their cowboy boots on, and this picture of them sitting on the bar. Man, it was just like, this is the coolest thing I ever did. And then the liner notes talk about uh, George Harrison and Tony Sheridan, both talk about Tony Sheridan says, uh, he talks all about meeting the Beatles and, and how great it was and how the scene in Hamburg was. And as, as somebody nine years old, my heart was just going like this when I heard it, because it was like, ultimate, ultimate rock and roll. And in the back, George Harrison talks about how he thinks, in his opinions, that as a live band, the best they ever were was when they were in Germany. And you could really hear the spirit of that. And surprisingly, the audio quality is, is, is excellent. Now, it was recorded all live. They, you know, they didn't have overdubs and Pro Tools and plugins and all the things. They just basically were on a stage with microphones and one, two, three, four, boom, go. And uh, the spirit is totally awesomely captured on this. This is a great sounding record. It blew my mind as a kid. Uh, it's a good package if you can find it. 
uh, on Polydor, but if you can't, the other cool thing I loved was that newspaper and this picture of them on the front. Anyways, it was a great package. I really love it. And if you can find it, great. If not, some of these songs are available online. Um, you can get on the, uh, you know, Spotify or whatever crap you're listening to. Now, this, this, this set of records here. The first time I heard them was in a double album. Uh, and it was called Live at the Star Club. And again... It was just totally amazing. It's John, Paul, George, and Ringo playing in a nightclub in Hamburg, Germany, right before they exploded. And it shows you at the peak of their Hamburg, you know, cavern days, the, the early days, uh, the raw days. And I love it. Oh, my God. Let me tell you something. Now, the sound recording on this isn't very good. What it was, it was recorded from the stage with, from what I understand, recording equipment that the club had, and they liked to record some of the bands so they could listen and, and, and critique themselves and things like that. It was never intended for release, and it's a, a primitive-sounding record, but they recorded it, and then they just forgot about it, and years later they had found these tapes, so they have since packaged it and sold it to different companies around the world. And uh, it is more heavy punk than anything out there you know anybody that wants to talk about how the Beatles are not uh you know rock and roll or whatever just listen to these Hamburg recordings and you will see that that's just not the case they could rock uh they rocked out with anybody and, and even later they did because after all you know let me ask you a question Helter Skelter is there a song heavier than Helter Skelter ever I mean there may be songs as heavy but heavier so anyways, these are a lot of covers and also some really early versions but of songs they went on to record. Like Mr. Moonlight's on here. Um, I believe you have... Uh, um, oh, actually, they don't have some of the Beatles. There, there were some Beatle tracks on the one in, in, in Hamburg. Uh, but this has some songs like Ain't Nothing Shaken with the Leaves on the Trees. Ain't Nothing Shaken. Let me tell you. When I put that on and I heard Ain't Nothing Shaking, God, it just rocked my world. If you get a chance to hear any of these, please do. Taste of Honey, Mr. Moonlight, Till There Was You, Kansas City, Hey, Hey. These are all songs they went on to record later. I think there's a recording somewhere. They must not have had the copy. They had a couple of, of Beatles songs on here on the Star Club one. Uh, live at the Star Club, there were some that had, uh, there were versions of... Um, uh, I saw her standing there and things like that. Maybe those might be available in the anthology. I don't remember. But anyways, if you have a chance to buy these, uh, please do. It's, these are historically great records. They, they, they uh, either sound great and have spirit or have so much spirit. Like these two albums, it doesn't matter that they're rough recordings. They sound so freaking great. The energy and the, and, the, and the excitement is just amazing. So uh, if you have a chance, pick these up and you too will have... Some gems in your vinyl vault.